everybody, and good day wherever you are watching live or watching this recording. I'm so excited uh, to tell you uh, about Deco. I strongly believe that in order to reach massive adoption of blockchain technology and really include everything and unlock the potential in blockchains, there's got to be a way to bring information about users, about their life, about their identity, um, whether it's how old they are or where they live, uh, with, in a privacy-preserving manner to be used in an automated way by smart contracts and by this technology. It's not just my belief. We see a huge market demand and application and use cases that I can't even uh, imagine that make use of it, whether you can say that you are a US um, uh, resident without actually revealing which state you live in, whether it's how old you are, um, uh, you know, that you're above a certain age, whether it's your risk profile, whether it's your credit score, whether it's something about your uh, diploma or education history, all of this can be used programmatically in imaginative ways and we see a huge demand, which will only increase with more and more bridges uh, to the real world. So I joined Chainlink uh, about uh, uh, half a year ago and learned this, uh, uh, that this amazing team, uh, Ari, Siam, uh, Drew, Peter, Lorenz, Fan, and some additional interns, advisors uh, that are not listed on their slide, are working on a technology called Deco, which solves this problem. And I'm truly, truly excited uh, to be here today to talk about this. So I'm gonna do three things. The first thing I wanna share, that we reached an amazing milestone. We are now at an alpha stage, and we are testing with partners. Some of them will be uh, with me on stage later, and I'll talk about that. And I'll build the talk in three parts. I'm gonna tell you um, uh, the deep technical how Deco uh, does what it does. I'm gonna describe the journey and the effort that the team went through taking De Deco from a research idea and a prototype into a working system. And I'm gonna uh, uh, share uh, uh, a glimpse into some of the use cases uh, that we have already tested with, and of course there are many, many more. So that's a lot to get through in uh, 25 minutes. Uh, let's do it. So the first question is, why Deco? Today, Chainlink already brings data from the world into blockchains. It brings, uh, uh, Chainlink oracles bring data like price feeds, uh, like proof of reserves, uh, they generate randomness, and they do it securely and reliably, and they gained the community trust. But oracles can only bring data that they themselves have uh, access to, that they have permission to access, and they bring it by seeing this information. Duh. The reality is that a lot of information, the vast majority of information, is actually not accessible to oracles. It's sitting in proprietary uh, services, uh, web servers, uh, uh, and other services. It requires user credentials. It requires sign-on or subscriptions. And even if you can access the information, there may be some sensitive data there. There may be privacy uh, or confidential uh, information that you don't want oracles themselves to see. You only want to compile it and bring claims about it uh, to uh, be used in smart contracts. So I'll give you some uh, uh, examples. Uh, again, if you want to prove that you're eligible uh, for, let's say, an NFT drop, airdrop, uh, and you're a real person, you may want to authenticate yourself using some, some method of authentication without disclosing your actual user handle or your username or your address. Um, if you want to uh, prove uh, eligibility for certain financial uh, use case, uh, like a uh, 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 credit loan or uh, any type of uh, financial activity. You may want to bring information from your bank, but you definitely don't want to expose your entire financial history on chain. And there are huge uh, uh, amount of uh, use cases uh, that uh, uh, can be brought. Uh, and imagine that you can do all of this uh, without compromising uh, privacy and without the services themselves and the apps touching the user information. So this sounds a little bit like magic, and it is. It's counterintuitive. How can Deco oracles help you, application builders, um, unlock this information and access uh, 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 information on behalf of your users without the Deco oracles themselves seeing this information? 
So let me uh, uh, help illustrate this with uh, 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 a story that I'll repeat throughout my talk. So imagine Jane, Jane Doe, she's anonymous, um, and she wants to prove um, that she's credit worthy for a loan. And in order to do that, she needs to show that her bank account uh, has uh, a combined balance of over $5,000. Well, what she could do is she, she could log on to her bank account and you know, the little window on her browser will show the little lock uh, of a, a TLS connection authenticating that she's actually logged on to her bank account. And uh, she can type her password, uh, and she knows that she's actually logged on to her bank account. What Jane wishes is for a deck oracle to be right there next to her, you know, maybe standing a little bit uh, uh, behind her shoulder, watching over, seeing that little browser you know, window with the lock at the time of the interaction, and witnessing that she's actually logged on to her bank account and uh, saying, yes, I, I saw Jane is actually uh, logging into her uh, bank account. And then when she types her password, it's okay, because all, all, all they see is XXXX, they don't get her access permissions, but they know that she's logged on. And then maybe Jane is using a privacy screen uh, so that you know, immediately the, the top screen showing all sorts of sensitive information is not visible to you know, uh, the person behind her shoulder. Uh, but then she can form a query, and the query is, please show the total combined balances that I have in my bank accounts. And then she can lift you know, the privacy screen just to show the answer to this query. So again, the DECO uh, technology would see the query and the answer and nothing before that. So whatever Jane chooses uh, to expose and to bring from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0 is what um, uh, the DECO technology will see. And of course, you want to do all of this without physically standing behind the user's shoulder, but automating this. And this is, in some sense, the essence of the Web 3.0. It's being able to bridge to information, data, credentials, capabilities that are locked uh, in Web 2.0 services and bringing them. So in three words, this is DECO. Provenance, privacy, and compatibility. So provenance uh, means that the DECO technology witnesses and can attest to the authenticity of information, where the information comes from. Uh, they, want, they, they can attest that an application that you developers develop is not made up. You don't make up information. You don't just say that you brought it from somewhere. We, we witness that you actually did bring it from the uh, uh, original source. Privacy, we bring only the information or derivatives uh, compiled from this information that are minimally needed for the function or the capability uh, that they're used for. And compatibility is sort of most important. This works with today's internet infrastructure. This doesn't assume that we're going to change all of TLS or every web server out there to uh, sign uh, uh, the responses to query. This works off the shelf with existing um, web services over you know, standard TLS connections uh, and using standard APIs for interaction, whether it's auth or plaid or you know, any other uh, uh, API. So this is ready to deploy without any change and without the data source even being aware that there's DECA technology witnessing uh, uh, this interaction. Let me get a little bit technical, uh, and this is where uh, I'll try to um, uh, share how um, uh, DECO does this unintuitive uh, sort of magic. So abstractly, there are three parties, three roles participating in this interaction. Um, there is the web server, that's the data source, uh, any web server, that's on one side. There is a prover, this is the term we use for whether it's the user or whether it's the app that is um, uh, signing on to the web server and querying for information. And then there's the verifier. This is run uh, as a DECO oracle uh, and uh, is participating in this three-way interaction. And what we form is a real-time interaction between these three parties where the verifier witnesses that the web server and the prover uh, are um, uh, communicating. So in our example, Jane would be the prover she will sign on to uh, her bank. That would be the web server. 
and will form you know, this three-way interaction with the verifier online. At the end of this three-way abstract interaction, um, the verifier has two things. It knows what is the endpoint that the prover interacted with. It was there. It can see what was queried and to which website. And it has an encrypted transcript of the communication between the prover uh, and the server. And so at this point, the communication with the data source can be dropped. Uh, and we remain with a two-way interaction between prover and a verifier. So remember, the uh, verifier knows that the data is authentic, the prover is not making up their own data, but it sees an encrypted uh, transcript of this interaction. So the first thing we can do, if we didn't care about privacy, um, we can already have the prover simply supply the key that decrypts the data. The verifier knows that the data is really the one that was exchanged between you know, the prover and the data source. It was really uh, pulled uh, from uh, the, the original data source. It decrypts it, and it sees uh, all the information there. And already this is a huge step, and I want to pause for a second before we get to the fancy stuff and say this is huge already. And the reason this is huge is a lot of information is not sensitive, but we just want authenticity uh, attestation. We want to know, for example, a user wants to prove that they own a, a particular social um, a platform handle. We will see this example later on. Um, they're going to reveal their social handle, whether it's your Gmail account or your Twitter. Um, that's not going to be kept secret. Uh, the only thing they care about is that somebody can sign off and say, yes, this is authentic. So this already unlocks uh, tremendous uh, uh, opportunities. And the key thing is that DECO allows applications that use this kind of information to not ask their customers to trust them, because DECO, the verifier, is right there to witness the authenticity of uh, the data that they, they decrypt. And it could be a user that brings information. It could be the application itself that logs onto websites and bring information uh, credibly uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to be used on chain. Next, we can add privacy. And this is uh, the most exciting part of this technology. Um, we harness the power of zero knowledge proofs in order for the prover to take the encrypted data and the knowledge that it was really pulled from the original source and make claims about it without actually revealing the data. Um, and a lot of what identity is about is not just, uh, in, in the uh, larger sense of it, it's not just about uh, uh, who you are, but also what credentials you own, what reputation you have. A lot of derivations of uh, uh, this uh, identity is what will be used actually programmatically. So again, in our example, Jane doesn't need to prove who she is. She doesn't need to, to disclose which bank she's banking with. She doesn't need to disclose even the actual balance that she has, only this claim that she has above $5,000. This is the only thing that uh, is shared. So this is now a two-way interaction uh, between the uh, uh, prover and the verifier after the initial connection uh, was made. And in this interaction, the prover will demonstrate to the verifier two things. So remember, the verifier already knows the URL of the website that the information was pulled from. It already uh, saw the query uh, if it's in the URL line. But it only has uh, an encrypted transcript. What the verifier, what, I'm sorry, what the prover will argue is, first of all, that it has the key that was established during the connection setup. So it will prove in zero knowledge that this was, in fact, the key that we was used to encrypt the transcript. It's not making it up. It's not encrypting something else or decrypting something else. And um, uh, the second thing is a uh, uh, link between the key and a selective partial decryption of the transcript. So what you see here in the slide is a redacted form of the response that came from the bank. So the bank responded with a lot of information that we don't want to expose. And one of the fields is a balance, which also we don't want to expose. But we want to prove certain claims about this balance. It was above $5,000. And so technically, this reduction is something that, in zero knowledge, we can prove. Um, 
little technical detail is that uh, all the fields have to be padded uh, to even hide the field length, how many digits are in the user's bank account. All of this is something that uh, you know, can be derived um, if the prover has the secret key to decrypt it, um, and uh, the verifier knows to link that to the actual transcript. And I want to uh, uh, emphasize the importance here of the verifying being a witness to the actual connection made. Up until that point, no zero knowledge magic, no advanced uh, cryptography no, no magic would help you because the prover can just make up information and then they can prove whatever they want about it and the key and whatever. Uh, there has to be uh, uh, this setup which is unique uh, to Deco. Um, I've talked a little bit about how this is done in the abstract, but this is a real working system over existing interactions. So, um, uh, as I said, um, this technology can be integrated to solve um, uh, the, the, the uh, privacy uh, information um, uh, problem with existing TLS connections, with existing APIs. So uh, most of the web servers will return a JSON object that looks similar uh, to this one. This is actually taken from a plaid interaction um, where the JSON will have the fields with the information that we care about and the uh, prover uh, simply needs to form a, a proof that analyzes this JSON object, uh, redacts some fields, exposes others, and makes uh, claims about it. This is working off the shelf with you know, real interaction. So at this point, let me uh, switch gears um, and talk about the journey that um, we went through at Chainlink uh, from taking this uh, uh, from uh, the research idea to uh, a working system. This is a pretty sophisticated technology, as, as you can imagine and as you saw. This was originally conceived by Ari Jules uh, and his team at uh, Cornell. Uh, Ari is our chief scientist. And um, uh, several of his co-authors listed on this uh, slide, uh, most of which are either with us at Chainlink or are still pursuing a degree, and so they're interns with us or will be interns with us uh, um, uh, working on this. Um, taking this from the research prototype uh, had to involve a, a lot of effort. Uh, it took us more than two years to get to the alpha stage that uh, we are at. Let me give you, um, let me describe some of the work that was going on. And this is working, thank you. Um, so first let's talk about the zero knowledge technology. Um, and I'm gonna say very, in a very binary way, the DECO zero knowledge technology is different, is like no other zero technology out there. So we all hear, hear a lot about snarks and starks and plonkies and this and that. But the DECO zero knowledge core engine is different. It is both less and more. It is less because zero knowledge technologies uh, like SNARKs uh, are verifier agnostic. They form a proof that is completely general uh, uh, purpose and anybody even 100 years from now can verify the proof. This is really powerful, it's also really slow, at least in today's uh, technology. And you can't imagine Jane you know, sitting, logging into her bag and then waiting for three minutes uh, um, for the zero knowledge technology uh, proof to be generated. This could work for things like uh, uh, pre-processing uh, uh, and compression of blocks of transactions, but not for the individual uh, user. And we don't need, this is very powerful, but we don't need it. Um, the verifier in DECO, in any case, has to witness, has to be uh, there in real time as part of the three-way interaction between uh, the prover and the verifier. And um, uh, without this, um, none of the proof actually holds. So in any case, we have a verifier-specific uh, need to form this proof. And for that, uh, we can do much, much better than technologies out there. And the DECO Zero Knowledge Engine is, well, let's put it in some numbers. It's about 100x or two orders of magnitude faster than any other zero knowledge library. Um, it's probably three orders of magnitude uh, uh, smaller in terms of uh, memory footprint uh, that runs on the prover. It's about 10x faster than when we started with this interactive zero knowledge uh, uh, proof technique uh, two years ago. Uh, and um, 
uh, there are many, many other improvements to the claims that are specifically made on these uh, uh, JSON objects uh, that we've improved uh, over time. And so overall, a lot, a lot of effort was invested into creating this unique technology. And um, we're gonna open all of this. So in the coming weeks, look for uh, a lot of educational material where we blog and uh, provide tutorials and uh, uh, various uh, materials that explain exactly what we did. And uh, we're also gonna uh, uh, have the core zero knowledge uh, uh, engine of Deco uh, as open source uh, because we love the community to scrutinize, uh, help understand it, uh, 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 help uh, build trust in it, and also uh, contribute uh, and uh, 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 share, share with us uh, building this technology. Um, so we also had to make a lot of other adjustments and enhancements to the uh, core uh, DECO uh, technology. So in particular, let's go back to this uh, redacted uh, JSON response that comes from a website. Uh, that you need to form a proof about. Well, somebody needs, needs to decide uh, uh, where the user goes for information and for what purpose. Somebody needs to parse this interaction, needs to understand what queries can be formed to a particular API and how to parse the response and what fields we wanna make claims about. And then they need to custom, customize the zero knowledge uh, proof uh, engine with the type of claim that they want to make uh, and uh, uh, so forth. And so um, what we did is we partnered with various uh, uh, service builders in the industry. Um, I will refer to them as integrators. They are the ones that will facilitate and orchestrate for the user to go to a particular data source, form the query, um, the user will um, uh, show a visual of this. So um, they will essentially uh, orchestrate for the user to interact with the web server. Um, the prover, the deco prover, will be integrated with those integrators. Uh, they will operate it, they will customize it, they will decide what claims uh, to form. And they will facilitate for the user to then go to uh, verifiers, uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, prove and argue uh, the claims that they're making. So there are a number of advantages of working in this form. The first one is the user is very lightweight. The user doesn't really need to make any decisions. The second one is once the user delegates, and this could be auth, this could be flood, this could be any, any form of delegation. Once they delegate to an integrating uh, service uh, to uh, operate on their behalf, um, they only have to do it once, and then if we want to employ multiple verifiers, and we want, we don't want a single oracle, we want a network of oracles, it's the job of uh, these integrators uh, to uh, uh, form these proofs against multiple, multiple uh, verifiers. And the key thing is that, again, using DECO as verifiers, an integrator service, this will be you uh, who want to uh, provide applications uh, with uh, uh, authentic and privacy preserving data. You don't need to ask your customers or you users to, to trust you. You can minimize trust in yourself because you have the deco verifying that what you say you're doing, you are actually doing. You are actually going to the data sources that provide authentic authoritative information, and uh, you are actually pulling the right information and the right data for them. So this is the state that uh, we're in today, and I'll talk about uh, a few use cases in a minute. Um, we've started the next step, where uh, we also want to reduce uh, trust in the integrators even further. So we, would, uh, we started building uh, um, uh, the infrastructure for operating the prover straight on the end client's device. So this could be a mobile phone, this could be a, a computer, you know, their laptop, so that they don't even have to trust any integrator to operate the prover or to host the prover. We're very excited about this uh, direction, uh, and if you're an application builder that wants to make use of this technology, we would love to hear how you would like to use the output from a prover and embed it in application and use it uh, for your use case uh, and work with you on this. So we've reached an exciting milestone. Um, 
uh, we're at the alpha testing uh, phase. We've completed several successful proof of concepts uh, uh, over the past year with uh, ecosystem partners. Uh, and I want to give you a glimpse uh, uh, into these tests. Uh, they fall into several categories. Um, uh, uh, financial risk uh, management, identity, social identity, and uh, general uh, systems of records. So the first one um, is an example that sort of uh, uh, underlies the Jane Doe example that I used uh, throughout the talk. Uh, so this was with uh, Teller Finance. This is a DeFi lending and borrowing application that would like to allow lending to users um, by using a, a proof of their uh, 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 credit worthiness rather than securing and uh, locking um, uh, assets and uh, uh, using them as collaterals. And so what Telefinance wanted is to allow their users to prove you know, something about their uh, financial history. In the proof of concept, what we did was uh, uh, prove that a user's combined bank you know, real-world uh, banking uh, uh, balances is above a certain limit, and that would make them eligible for a loan uh, of a certain uh, magnitude. Another example is with Photochromic. Photochromic is uh, uh, a, uh, a service um, that um, uh, uh, wants to allow users simply to prove that they're real persons, that they actually have something like a Gmail account or a Twitter account or you know, any kind of uh, presence in the social networks. Um, so they allowed the users to log on and then prove that they own a social uh, service handle. Uh, Click is a somewhat uh, similar um, uh, application in a similar space, but what they want is for the users to be able to uh, keep their social handle uh, secret, but prove things about their uh, social activities. So prove that they are Twitter users who follow a certain other account or who commented on another account or proof of fandom or things like that without actually having to reveal who they are. Um, so um, in a similar way, they allow their users to log on to uh, uh, Twitter or other uh, uh, social platforms and uh, then pull information about their activities and about their life over which uh, credentials and claims are made. So this is number three. And for number four, I don't have to tell you, because I have Osama Khan, uh, the uh, co-founder and CEO of, of Burrata, to come and tell us uh, about their use case and how they made uh, use of uh, Deco in their use case. So please, Osama. At Brata, we believe um, all social and financial systems will be living on chain in the future. But to seed that future, we need to, we need to bring some existing Web2 data into Web3. That is why we have built this integration layer that does such Web2 to Web3 bridging. And in the demo, we'll see how Chainlink Deco makes this entire infrastructure trustless. Imagine being a dApp developer and having access to consumer identity, financial history, um, and tens of other data points, um, all available to you in Web3, on-chain, while res uh, um, preserving consumer privacy. We have built the infrastructure to do exactly that at Brata. We want to become a public good infrastructure where a developer can integrate any Web2 API um, uh, and data sources into their smart contracts. And we want this to be trustless. So without further ado, let's dive into the demo. Today, we're presenting a demo app called Web3 Retreat that you see here. This dApp was built to showcase how a Web3 developer would integrate Burata and how Deco makes the data infrastructure trustless. Awesome, let's switch to my browser and load the app. Cool. Making sure the network works. We're just loading. So this is um, an app developed by a shadowy super coder known as 0x Justine. Uh, Justine owns a cottage in the woods of British Columbia and um, 
she wants anyone to be able to rent it out permissionlessly as long as they're willing to, one, verify their identity, and two, sign a temporary rental agreement. If she was to build this entire infrastructure herself, integrating with an identity provider, figuring out DocuSign and doing it all chain, she would have to do a lot of legwork in understanding web standards, verified credentials, privacy, um, and also the on-chain integration component of this. And all of that is not trivial. But with Burrata, we give her 10 lines of code. She specifies that I want to use Stripe Identity, and I want to use Pandadoc for document signing, and here's the document that people need to sign. And boom, you've got this application up and running with a smart contract integration and adapt that basically lets anyone with a wallet um, rent this uh, cottage permissionlessly. And the reason she wants to do this is because she wants rental transparency in the long run. She wants to have the history of this cottage, which can be an NFT, uh, on chain, right? So, you know, if I'm as a user wanting to um, rent this um, cottage out, I can just go to the website, connect wallet, I'm connected here, and now it just says, it's really cheap, it's, I, can, I just need to verify my wallet. I'll go here, and, ooh, we're on a 5G connection here, sorry. So through the Brata integration, I'm suddenly presented with a rental agreement, and I can, you know, of course, read everything you sign, but maybe for demo not, So I will really quickly try to sign this. Let's say for today. And now Burata confirms that you want to indeed share this agreement and the claims with the, the DAP. Sign a few messages here. Please note, no private data is going to the, to the blockchain but the claims and credentials are. And then I'm presented with identity verification through Stripe Identity. In the interest of time, and also not doxing myself with my identity card up here, let's just go with the test data that Stripe Identity already holds. In the production use case, you would, of course, have to take a selfie, scan your ID. So I've submitted my identity information to Stripe Identity. Press continue in Stripe. And now Burata just wants to you know, confirm that you want to share all of these credentials with the DAP again, because you know, you've added to the claims that you're presenting to the application, you sign things, and boom, you're done. You're actually now ready to mint the rental NFT and um, have a fun time in the woods. I'm gonna do that really quick, so while I talk, we can have the NFT minted. Um, isn't this like simply mind blowing? You only need you only needed ten lines of code, and you could basically um, suddenly start using any Web two API and do things which were based on private data in a DAP without running any AWS infrastructure, any Node services, any API key management, and all of that stuff. So the question becomes: Why would you trust Burata? Why would Justine, who's built this cottage app? believe Burrata and believe that the data has indeed come from Stripe Identity and it has, the document has indeed been signed in Pandadoc. She wouldn't, and that's where Deco comes in. Deco helps Burrata prove provenance. Deco helps build trust in this infrastructure. Now, on the side, you, you know, in my terminal, you'll see I've got this thing, I've got Deco running already, and while we, were going through the, while we were going through the claims being generated, you must have maybe seen the, the terminal flicker. So we ran a POC with Deco, where um, basically all connections being made to Stripe and connections being made to Pandadoc and all other broader integrations uh, go through Deco. And every time we do that, Deco gives us a proof, a zero-knowledge proof that we can then share with the developer. And the developer can basically um, verify that data provenance, and they can verify 
independent of Burata through Chainlink that uh, through Chainlink verifiers that this data indeed came from um, you know the said Web2 service and it's not being forged. Um, so instead of showing you the infrastructure, I'll just really quickly here um, show you an attestation for the Stripe data that was being sent uh, using the UI that Chainlink Deco has built. So what you see here is that um, indeed the user uh, ID was the given one, and indeed this user is a verified user inside Stripe identity. And that this is a, you know, a, a valid proof, uh, the signatures check out, and yes, this is something that the Deco prover had generated um, for uh, Burata. So the developers can always trust the infrastructure. Now, going back to my slides, That was all just in 10 lines of code, maybe a bit more than that. Uh, but yeah, that was all just 10 lines of code. And what you have now is basically um, an endless possibilities and list of primitives that you can use and build all sorts of new web apps. Oops, I forgot my clicker somewhere here. So let's recap what we just saw. First, a third-party app that allows consumers to rent uh, this cottage integrated Brata for identity verification and e-signature claims. Then Brata obtained that data from the configured uh, integrations that is Stripe Identity and PandaDoc. Remember, no private data was ever sent to Deco or any other party in this entire pipeline. Uh, Deco uh, then gave Brata the claims, uh, the proofs to the claims, which Burata could then provide to the developer. And the developer can independently go to Chainlink Verifier and confirm that the zero-knowledge proofs were actually, uh, you know, they're, they're valid. So Deco enables Burata to be a public good that developers don't need to trust because we only trust cryptographic truths, don't we? So we're happy to share that we ran this successful POC with Chainlink, leveraging Deco's zero-knowledge proofs to preserve privacy and allowed a third party to verify data provenance without really revealing any consumer data. So we want to thank Chainlink uh, for the opportunity to work on this pilot and look forward to using Deco in production. Thank you. Are we staying here? We can stay. Yeah. So I just want to thank uh, uh, Osama. I do, I do want to say I do trust you. But I'm not sure they do, and I'm not sure Web3 would be. I know. But I fully trust you. I can go through Deco. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with this, uh, thank you everybody for coming to the talk, and thank you, Asama, again. Thanks.